Hey, this is The Sword and the Pen Reflections. It is my casual alternative to the formal channel, The Sword and the Pen, link up there. I am going to be doing a comparison of the Wheel of Time Amazon Prime series and the books, having never viewed the series before or read the books before. I'm about 11 chapters in and I figured that's probably far enough for me to be able to watch the first episode. And I sat down to start it, but watched the trailer and the teaser and realized I think I need to talk about this first. So I tried to think there are three perspectives that are going to see this trailer. And I'm talking about the trailer. I know that there's a teaser as well, but we're gonna to talk just about the trailer. Um, the first perspective is somebody who wouldn't normally watch a show like this and doesn't read fantasy, but you know, that's, you want to draw in new people, people who wouldn't normally look for this. This is what the trailer's supposed to do, is hopefully draw them in, right? The second perspective is somebody who does enjoy epic fantasy, but has no prior knowledge of the series. That's a definitely a crowd you're hoping to pull in. And the third perspective is, of course, the fan of the series. So somebody who is familiar with the story and you would hope automatically wants to go and see this simply for its existence, right? And I'm seeing big problems already from all three perspectives. So the trailer starts out with who I presume is Moraine. And she is explaining what the oaths of the Aes Sedai are. And she does that. And then we get an explanation that the Aes Sedai are servants of the world, right? And then we get the explanation that a dark lord is rising. And she says that one of you, there's only one person who can, you know, stop it. And it's one of you five. And then we get a bunch of faces and a bunch of quick shots of action happening throughout the series. And then it ends with one character saying to another, and I presume again, that it is one of our, well, I guess five, um, saying, do you think that we'll ever go home or something to that effect? And the other character saying no. Now, here's the problem. Okay, so let's look at it from the perspective first of somebody who's not interested in fantasy and science fiction. Okay, The Matrix drew a lot of people to go and see it because it was such a unique concept at the time. Most people who go see movies didn't, you know, or had never read cyberpunk or anything before that, had never seen something like this. And that is what drew them in what everybody, you know, the world around you is not real. It is a, the fabrication that has been pulled before your eyes. We're actually plugged into this machine that is harvesting our heat in order to generate power. That was something that we hadn't seen done before and it was intriguing. So it drew in people who might not normally go and see this. Also, we saw that it had spectacular special effects. All of that is used to pull in a new audience. So Looking at this trailer from that perspective, there was nothing about it that felt unique. And you can say all you want, well, aren't, you know, what about the Aes Sedai? And, you know, the idea of the, there's a prophecy and it could be any one of you. Okay, well, I will say this. The most interesting thing is that there is some sort of a prophecy or a foretelling that there is one person who can stop the Dark Lord, but it, we don't know who it is out of five people. So we assume that there's five characters that we're going to be following. That maybe is interesting, but we don't get to that until a significant way into this trailer. Instead, we have a huge chunk of it taken up by this explanation of the Aes Sedai. And none of their oaths were especially spectacular or unique. Nothing in it that felt like, wait, that was a weird rule. How are you going to live by that? You know, saying you, you can't lie, they won't create weapons, and they won't use their power as a weapon. So, I didn't see how this was something that was so interesting or unique that it was going to draw people in. They would have had to watch past that to get to the part where we um, have the, the prophecy thing. But even then, that, that's kind of, it's a mild thing. And after that, there were so many flashes of faces and events happening that we had no context for and no explanation in the trailer that honestly... If I was not into science and uh, science fiction or fantasy, I probably would have been like, I have no idea what who's talk who she's talking about. I mean, I'm supposed to be drawn to this woman, I'm supposing, but then she talks about you know these five characters. Now that's the interesting thing. There's five people, and it, the chosen one could be any one of you. 
So the trailer really should have been focused on these five characters, something to intrigue me about them. Show me their lives in this natural world, like, you know, show us the Hobbiton of this world setting and draw us to these characters, show us that they're friends, show us that they have their own hopes and dreams and struggles and that that world is shattered for them. And now we're invested in what happens to these guys. And then at the very end of the trailer, you have them saying, oh no, you know, do you think we're ever gonna get it, gonna get home? And the one character saying no. And I'm going, who cares? We don't even know what home is. It's from the trailer. It looks like life is just a hellhole for them all the time because it's just these dark creatures and beasts and animals and things. You know, it is such a, a cluster of, of images thrown at you that there's nothing to draw me in emotionally to this or psychologically. I mean, I, I, there was nothing intriguing about the plot that was presented to me and there was nothing emotional about it. I don't feel drawn to any particular character. So I just don't care. And then, you know, like I said about the matrix, the special effects were something that might've drawn people in. Well, I can tell from this that the cinematography looks good and the special effects look decent, but you know, it's no Lord of the Rings or the Matrix. So I, I wasn't good enough to make me go, dang, those special effects were good. Except maybe the beast creatures, the, the Trollocs. I have someone who knows what happens in the first couple of chapters of the books. I can say the Trollocs looked like, okay, I, I like being able to see that. But then again, they look a lot like the, um, the, the Minotaurs and stuff from the Chronicles of Narnia. So it's not something revolutionary. It's not something we haven't seen on screen before. So again, still not super, super intriguing. Um, and other than that, the, the magic that we see, the Moraine character swirling about her, it wasn't something super unique. So I just don't see how this is appealing to somebody who isn't already drawn to the fantasy genre. Now well, let's switch to the perspective of somebody who is drawn to the fantasy genre. They see this trailer and again, there's nothing about it that stands out from any other fantasy that I have heard of for exactly the same reasons that the perspective who isn't drawn to fantasy would would have been interested. You know, you get the idea. I'm a bit tired and the air conditioning is off and it's almost 120 degrees outside. So it's a little toasty in here. But um, you get the idea. So there was nothing in it that was so unique that I've never heard of it in a fantasy series, movie, show, or book series before. Really, the only thing that might have drawn me to it is that I know it's based off of a series that I've definitely heard of. I mean, just about everybody who has read anything fantasy or science fiction or has been into the even the movies and TV shows that have come out over the last, you know, four, however many years people have been making movies about science fiction and fantasy, you probably have heard of The Wheel of Time because it was that big in fant epic fantasy. So you might go, I wonder what it's all about. But is that it? That's the only reason you're going to watch it because the magic didn't look that unique. The beast creatures were not that unique. The Order of the Aes Sedai, their vows didn't sound that interesting. I, it just wasn't that intriguing. You got to try to draw in an audience with your trailers, and I just didn't see how this was doing it. Okay, I mean, okay, the, maybe I would have waited to see how people react to it, and then, you know, okay, if people love it, then I'll give it my time. But I don't think I would have been like, wow, I'll bet this is really different from all the other science fiction and uh, fantasy series that we've seen on, you know, the sci-fi channel from the early 2000s. Okay, now the final perspective is the Wheel of Time fan. People who love the series, know the lore inside out, have read the books a dozen times. And I've only read the first 11 chapters, but I can tell you that I see a problem. And that is that Moraine seems to declare that there are five of you who the, the chosen one might be. Now in the book, there's only three. So I'm going, wait, wait a minute, five? What did they add two new characters? I mean, unless this happens at some point later in the book where we find out, oh my goodness, the chosen one, the dragon reborn, might actually be one of, um, there, there might actually be more than just the three that we know of. I, I If that's not the case, I would be, 
kind of ticked off that it sounds like they're changing something pretty big. At the same time, though, okay, I'm 11 chapters in, and this has not been revealed as a thing yet. So is the trailer giving away a big revelation that we shouldn't have heard about until much later in the story? That's the other thing. So as a fan of the series, and I'm like I said, I have not read the series before, so I don't know what's coming, but I would not... I would, again, be wary about this series. I would have already doubts about it. So that is an issue. And I really think that whoever is cutting these trailers needs to, needs to learn how to appeal to a new audience. Because I'll tell you what, if you can put out a trailer that would be intriguing enough to draw people who aren't normally into science fiction and fantasy, it's probably going to draw the people who are fans of science fiction and fantasy and the people who are major big fans. Because I can only imagine that all of those quick flashes of faces and stuff, I mean, I had to assume that these would mean something to people who have read the books and know them inside out and go, oh, I know what scene that is. Oh, I can tell what character that is. Because as somebody who, I mean, I, rec I the only person I think I could identify was Moraine and Lan and Rand. That's it. But there's a lot of characters in this story. Already by chapter 11, there's a ton of characters. And I'm going, I could not tell you who any of them are. I, maybe Egwene is the younger girl, but there was like a couple of girls. There's actually some others in there. Either way, I felt like this must have been a trailer full of Easter eggs for the people who already are super fans. But again, is that what you should be doing when you're making a trailer. You only want to attract the pre-existing fans. You don't want to expand it a little bit and draw in some more people. So I know this is a harsh criticism, but I just had to make that criticism. Okay, I was going to end my video right there, but I decided, you know what, I'll go ahead and watch the teaser as well and make my comments on that. And I did watch the teaser before and I've watched it again now. And you know what? I have very similar problems with the teaser. Now it seems in this, there's even less of a story given. It's just basically telling you what the stakes are. Like, you know, our whole world is in danger and nothing will be the same kind of, you know, you've heard this sort of thing a million times. Every fantasy epic is about the end of the world. So what's new in this story? Nothing. Again, I see nothing in this teaser to tell me that this is different from any other epic fantasy story I've heard about. So as somebody who's not interested in science, in fantasy science fiction, I would, I would maybe say that, okay, there was um, the image of the cloaked figure with just the mouth, which looks, reminds me heavily of the mouth of Sauron, <laughs> if you are familiar with the mouth of Sauron. That was interesting. There was a couple of visual effects shots in there that looked good, but then there were some that didn't look all that great. Like um, the big epic city with the tower. Now, I, I don't know, the, the, that sort of shot just doesn't impress me anymore. And quite honestly, I mean, I looked at that and I could tell it wasn't real. So or I could tell that it was a matte painting. I'm not saying, well, obviously it's a matte painting because a city like that doesn't really exist in real life. You know what though? You can do that and it looks real and you can do that and it's clearly a matte painting. Now, not to say that bad special effects are gonna destroy a story because there are plenty of good movies and TV shows out there fantasy epics included that didn't have good special effects, but the stories were intriguing enough that we forgave those things. So why are you making this a selling point? <sighs> I, I just don't think it's a good idea. Um, I know that when Rings of Power came out, a lot of people ripped it to shreds for its costumes looking cheap. And you know what? Quite honestly, some of the costumes in this did not sell me. I don't know. Well, maybe it'll be different when we get to see it in the actual show. But the thing is this. Nothing about this visually told me something intriguing to the point that I'm like, you know what? I can't miss this one. I think I would just forget that it existed. It looks just like the, the Rings of Power. It looks just like Shadow and Bone. It looks just like all these others. Actually, Shadow and Bone was more unique looking than this simply because of the Russia inspiration, right? So I don't know. I, I've got a bad feeling about this. Um, let's see, now from the perspective of somebody who loves science fiction and fantasy, I don't think my opinion has changed. Again, nothing about this teaser 
gave me characters, emotion, or story. It was just the stakes and a bunch of images of things that I'm supposed to think look cool. That's not how you sell a story. I'm sorry, it's just not. And then the final perspective is the super fan. That, that's the only thing I can think of is this must have been made specifically for people who are already fans of the series. So if you are a super fan, you know the, the Wheel of Time inside and out, you've read the books a bunch of times, were these trailers to you like full of Easter eggs that just blew your mind? Because uh, is that the case? Because that's the only thing I can imagine is that's what these were for. These were for the super fans. Let me know about it in the comments. Anyway, um, I'm off to go and watch the first episode before people in this house start to complain about the air conditioning being off. So uh, if you would like to, please like, subscribe, like to, please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. If you're feeling really generous, check out my Patreon or Ko-fi and uh, be good to yourself.